It's not uncommon for people to post pictures on Facebook showing their melted fuse holders and they'll ask what happened? Why did the fuse holder melt? Well, I'm gonna hook up this fuse holder and I'm gonna hook it up as wrong as possible and hopefully we can replicate the failure. Even though we're gonna be just a few inches from the power source, I'm gonna use a stupid long run of wire. Even though the amp really needs four gauge wire, I'm just gonna use eight gauge. So between the power supply and the amp, I'm gonna be using this stuff right here. This is some eight gauge wire from Boss. It's so bad that I can use the 10 gauge cutter on this wire stripper to strip this eight gauge wire. Onto the fuse, a lot of people like to dog this style fuse. There's nothing inherently wrong with this kind of fuse. It's not by default a bad fuse. What happens, I don't know how well we can see in there, there are some little teeth-like things that hold these in. And if you just get like a really bad connection, or if you take it in out a lot and wear it out, I think I'm gonna take like some pliers or something and try to mash these pieces in, just so I have a terrible connection right here. It looks like it's just a little clip that you can pull out. Now you don't wanna do that, but I do. So let's pull it out and see what happens. Oh yeah, that did the job. Yeah, that's gonna be a terrible connection. That end holds in, this one's just in there kinda loose. Don't know how well this shows up on camera, but inside here there's a little ferrule, and that ferrule there is what you use for eight gauge wire. You take it out to use four gauge wire, and it's held in with a set screw. Without the ferrule, there's no way that eight gauge wire is gonna come into contact. So it'd be cool to do it without the ferrule, but they're gonna have to put the ferrule in. You should use this little plug right here to get a good watertight fit. I'm gonna try to do a good job on the connection that's gonna be on the same side as the power supply, just to make sure this side's kind of safe. I'd like for it to burn up on this side of the fuse over here. Between the fuse and the amp, I'm gonna use some decent wire, mostly because I don't have a long run of that cheap boss wire laying around. I got this wire here from Down For Sound. It's tinned oxygen-free copper. I'll be sure to give you a link down in the video description. Description. Now you want to make a solid connection when you tighten down these screws, but I'm going to do a half-assed job because I want this to fail spectacularly on camera. It's all wired up and as you can see right here in this shot, I've got a terrible connection. The fuse is jiggling around inside the fuse holder. This should do the trick. For this test, I'm going to be using an old Kenwood amp that I've had laying around for a couple of years. Now the right way to do this for this kind of connection is to install a fork terminal. But again, our purpose here is to do things wrong. So I went ahead and crypt off a terminal because I couldn't get the wire in there without one. I don't know how the hell people even install stuff without terminals. All right, the amp is all wired up and we are now playing a 40 hertz test tone into a four ohm resistor. And the thermal camera gives us an immediate result. Now these cameras are gonna highlight the highest and lowest temperature regions. And right now the hottest spot in the frame is that crappy undersized boss wire. It's already up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit and climbing. And on the fuse holder, the side with the bad connection is up in the 90s and climbing. We're getting about 275 watts. I've dyno this amp before. It can easily do over 500 watts into a four ohm load. So I'm not pushing the amp very hard. And I've got an AC clamp meter here. And as you can see, we're pulling just under 29 amps of current. So think about this as replicating what you might expect to happen if you had a small system in your daily driver. And the fuse itself looks fine, but the thermal camera tells a different story. Over the course of just about a minute, we went from under 110 degrees to about 125. At this point, we are still under the five minute mark and we can see the temperature now is rolling past 140. And while that's heating up, let me show you something cool you can do with a thermal camera. If you have a loose connection somewhere in your vehicle, this can help you sniff it out. This brand Topdon sells diagnostic tools like OBD2 readers. So what I did was I just drove around a little bit and played some music and pulled over to see if the thermal camera would reveal any bad connections. In the back, the hottest thing is the subwoofer amp. I'm currently running a JP8 from Down for Sound and it's hanging out at around 100 degrees, but it's also sitting in full sunlight. The fuse blocks are not even the slightest bit warm. And here is 
here's the fuse from my back battery going to the amplifiers and it is cool as a cucumber. Under the hood, we have a different story. As you can imagine, the engine is putting out a lot of heat, so it's a little bit harder to look for a loose connection. Everything around the battery appears to be glowing hot, but that's just because of the heat coming off of the engine. And really things aren't terribly hot in this shot here. The peak temperature is about 85 degrees and none of the connections really seem to be standing out as hotter than the rest. I've only got one complaint about this style thermal camera with the thermal camera connected, the lens for the thermal camera is on the opposite end of the cell phone. And so that really makes it hard for me to get up close and point the two cameras at the exact same thing. But if you're not trying to film this for a YouTube video, it's a great diagnostic tool. And I recommend that you pick one up if you can. I'll be sure to give you a link to it down in the video description. All right, back to the fun part. Let's see how our fuse holder's holding up. We can see that we've started to develop a problem. We've been running this somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes at this point, And we can see that the fuse in the holder looks a little bit burned. And there's a little drop of solder at the bottom of the fuse. I'd stepped away from my experiment for a few minutes to work on some other things. So I've not been monitoring the thermal camera. So I don't know how hot it got while I was away. Over on the thermal, we see that we're hanging out just below 200 degrees, which to me doesn't seem like it's hot enough to melt things. Turning the thermal camera to the amp, we can see the amp is up to 165 degrees. And then looking over at the amp dyno, we're not generating as much power. We're actually down to 225. And the current draw has dropped off by a couple of amps. Now the camera's showing somewhere between 204 or 205 degrees. Okay y'all, it's a few minutes later and both the power and the current are continuing to drop. You can see here that the fuse holder has started to deform. Plus the wire is either working its way out of the fuse holder or the insulation is beginning to melt. Check it out, less power, less current. And our fuse holder is starting to cool off. We're down to 181 degrees, while the amp is about 170. So we didn't quite get a catastrophic failure, but it's time to call it before this amp gets any hotter. Let's take this thing apart and look at the fuse. This is the unaltered side. It's just fine. Nothing is burnt or damaged. The threads on the other side appear to have melted together. And of course the fuse is gonna fall right out because I took out the clip that holds it in. It's still too hot to touch, but you can see right here the burn marks and that little drop of solder at the bottom of the fuse. Just to show you that the fuse holder did indeed begin to melt, I had to use some pliers to get it apart and get that metal out of the plastic. I was hoping that we would have had a bigger, more spectacular failure. That kind of thing gets more views on YouTube. But what you just saw was really a lot closer to what you will more likely experience out in the real world. Not a huge catastrophic failure, but a gradual incomplete failure that eventually leads to that catastrophic failure. And that's good news for you because you you should be able to catch it before it becomes a total catastrophic failure. And maybe if you're worried about this kind of thing, consider grabbing one of these little thermal cameras to help you with your troubleshooting. Now, at no point was I ever drawing more than 30 amps of current. And if you're running a really big system, you wanna make sure you spend some extra cash on decent wire and decent fuse holders. I'll be sure to give you some links down below to some fuse holders and wire that I recommend. Now to learn how to select the right size power wire for your amplifier, click right here. Before I go, I wanna say thank you to all of my patrons, especially my $25 patrons, Bo, Dylan, Fargo, JD America, David, and Baba. I'm Justin, this is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, and I will see you on the next adventure.